What's up guys, Sean here doing a video in conjunction with the David Horowitz Freedom Center and StopK12Indoctrination.org and today we're going to talk about a curriculum that says that if you are white, Christian, or male, you are an oppressor. An oppressor that's very nature prevents you from empathizing with minorities. This curriculum, which is really just training on how to be a left-wing extremist, is brought to you by an organization called Just Communities, an organization that currently has a multi-year contract to teach this program to high school students in Santa Barbara. Now I've gone through the Just Communities workbook that's being taught to students in Santa Barbara, and I was genuinely surprised at how racist it was, how much political propaganda is in it, and the weird conspiracy theories that Just Communities presents to our students. Right off the bat, there's this chart that blatantly labels large swaths of the population oppressors. So if you're white, you're an oppressor. If you're a male, you're an oppressor. Christian, able-bodied, heterosexual, not transgender, that makes you an oppressor. And all of these majority groups are colluding to keep minorities down. And that collusion, according to Just Communities, is conscious, unconscious, intentional, unintentional, through action, through inaction, and through silence. Now, if that sounds like a non-disprovable hypothesis, that's exactly the point. Because according to Just Communities, no matter what you possibly do, if you're a white person, you are a racist and you are perpetuating racism and you're oppressing minorities. It is stated clearly in the workbook that there is no way around the fact that you are racist and you're using your white privilege to oppress minorities. And even if you try to treat people as individuals, the idea of individualism in and of itself is racist. Furthermore, according to Just Communities, the fact that you are white or in any privileged group listed makes you incapable of feeling empathy for minorities. And no, you did not mishear that. The Santa Barbara Unified School District is implementing a program that says that somebody's race, gender, sexuality, religion determines their capacity to feel empathy for other people. What's also curious about the workbook is that Just Communities is against public education. According to their workbook, public education is a scheme by the rich to turn people into consumers and workers. And it's racist as well. Supposedly, public education is designed to give the illusion of equal opportunity so that minorities will fail, so then we can blame minorities and their culture for their students failing in the public schools. They also reframe American history in culturally Marxist ways. For example, in their education timeline under 1836, slave owner Jim Bowie and Indian killer Davy Crockett die at the Alamo trying to take Texas from Mexico by force. Obviously an anti-American framing of history, a strange one since one of the reasons why Davy Crockett joined the Texas Revolutionary Force is because he was so opposed to Andrew Jackson's Indian Removal Act. The entry for 1957 says Dwight D. Eisenhower sent federal troops to Little Rock, Arkansas to integrate the schools, but it says he didn't do it because he was against desegregation, he did it for federal supremacy. So that's a partisan rewrite of history. In the late 70s entry, they call the tax revolt in California a so-called tax revolt, even though it was the voters restricting the state of California's ability to raise their property taxes. So that's blatantly advocating for a different tax policy in our public schools. Now look, I've only scratched the surface on this workbook and I want to point out some of the more absurd notions presented in it. For example, there's a section in this workbook that actually excuses domestic violence. This section asserts that when somebody in the working class commits domestic violence against their wife and children, that that is a response to the oppression they face from the upper class. This flies in the face of everything taught in criminal justice courses. The greatest predictor of domestic violence is whether or not that person experienced domestic violence growing up. The idea that you could shift blame from the perpetrator to the perpetrator's employer is patently absurd. Equally silly is Just Communities' excuse for gangs and gang violence. According to Just Communities, the reason minorities disproportionately form criminal gangs is because they are denied access to power due to their race and due to ageism. We've gone over the racial stuff already, but according to this workbook, it's wrong of our society to not let children run institutions of power. They claim that denying 13 year olds the ability to run institutions is a form of ageism, when in reality, it's a form of common sense. Now look, I could talk about this workbook for hours. It gets more absurd the more you read through it. There are a number of exercises in it, like the mirrors exercise, that demand that school administrators divide all of their students up into categories and then create mirrors based on those categories within the staff and around campus. But what I want you to take away from this is this radical left-wing racist curriculum has been implemented in a major school system 
for years, which is why I've thrown my support around the code of ethics for K through 12 educators, because there are specific provisions within the K through 12 code of ethics that address the problems I've laid out in this video. And I'm specifically referring to the ninth plank in the code of ethics, which would prohibit segregating students based on racial identity or singling out certain racial groups as responsible for the suffering of all others. Please visit Stop K through 12 Indoctrination and read over the code of ethics and then get behind it. There you can also report instances of K through 12 Indoctrination indoctrination that you see in your own school district, and you can read about other instances of K-12 indoctrination across the country. This has been Sean Fitzgerald for the David Horowitz Freedom Center. Till next time.